So hi, everybody. Uh, this is Pam Coey, and I have Elise Katz with me. And as many of our founding members know in pro, I had asked you what your top three struggles were in art. And uh, Elise has um, agreed to discuss her challenges, and she has just come away from a very successful exhibition, solo exhibition. So I thought, how great would it be to talk to her about her struggles and kind of see what kinds of challenges she sees in her own work. So Elise, um, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so you wanna talk about your struggles here. Um, you had mentioned that um, color was one of your challenges and that it's hard for you to get away from achromatic grays. Um, how do you deal with that challenge in your work? Cause your work is colorful. It's, you know, it's obviously well received, but how, how do you deal with the challenge and struggle of color? Um, well, I, it frustrates me a lot um, because I tend, I mean, I guess we all have color bias just naturally. And I tend to, I think, gravitate to warm colors. So I feel this need to constantly add some warmth to colors. And also, sat highly saturated colors, although I think are beautiful, they scare me. <laughs> I kind of don't know what to do with them. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I struggle with that. And I, you know, I just feel like I'm constantly trying to push myself away from that. But it, I'm not sure that I'm that successful. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just... I like gray. I can't help myself. Well, okay. So you like the grays, um, but I guess what I'm hearing is that you like the grays, but in, in other people's work, you also enjoy the saturation. And are you just feeling like, are you feeling guilty for liking grays? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know if it's so much that I think maybe it's, I'm boring myself. Oh, okay. And I, I want to wake myself up a little bit in terms of color. Yeah. And I'm not exactly sure how to do it. You did a, um, a video a while ago where you chose three colors or four colors that you don't normally use. It was the video where you, you we went out in your, in your uh, garden. Yes, yes. And, and I know you started out and you weren't very happy, but I, I, but, I mean, they looked fabulous to me. It, 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 I loved what you did with those colors. And after that video, I took those exact same colors okay. and I, I did do a painting. I can't say I think I was as successful as you were, mm -hmm. but I periodically, when I'm really struggling, try to choose some colors that I don't normally use. Right, right. Um, and that, that seems to be a way sometimes to move in that direction, I think. I think that's really wonderful. Another challenge I thought, you know, for you, uh, it's one that I might try myself or that I have done similar things to that is to like, uh, go bold, right? So whatever you do, you love geometry, whatever it is, and you, you know, layer all of your crazy colors and don't even allow yourself to mix like black and white in there, you know, that's like not on your palette. And then you're going to feel this, probably this like revulsion, because that's, <laughs> kind of what happens if especially when you appreciate grays and you love them and then you know you know how to how to mix harmonious colors so if you worked with 10 bright bold colors you mix them all together and then that's your harmony mix and then you add a little bit of that to each of the colors and then you come back over all of your shapes and you almost match them, but with uh, the more harmonious subdued colors, but you leave, either you leave a little bit or you don't, you, maybe you cover all of it up. Um, and then you just come back with your sander, you know, <laughs> and, and little bits of saturation are gonna come through that, that uh, desaturated color in a way that maybe that'll satisfy both of your needs for some saturation and you sand more where you want the saturation to come through. Um, it's just something that I, I consider to be a great thing to do in the explore phase where you're, you know, cause this can happen and it happens to a lot of people where they throw on so much color and they don't even know what to do because it's just too much. It's like way too much dessert, you know? Right. You <laughs> do you think you might want to try something like that? Absolutely. 
absolutely. Oh, I, you know, if you do that, I would love to have another chat with you at some point and see how that came out, you know. Um, awesome. What about design and composition? You talk about that is uh, something that you struggle with and don't we all, right? I mean, there's never one way to do something. You know, I, um, when I look back at my older work, like from, from the beginning, I think I always had a tendency to um, square things off and, and use a lot of geometry without even realizing I was doing it. But I look back now and I see a lot of that. Um, and I, I would like to get away from it but I kind of don't know how. I mean, I, I start out always making a lot of chaos on the, on the campus or on the panel. And then I sort of try to calm it down and edit it. But inadvertently, I, it always winds up being very geometrical. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I don't know what, I don't know how to get out of my own way, if you know what I mean. Yeah, interesting. I mean, I love geometry as well. Boy, it's such a balance, isn't it? Um, it is. It really is. I mean, yeah. I mean, this painting behind me is is kind of like challenging me right now because I also love geometry, but I realize that it's mostly curvilinear, which feels kind of strange to me. And I'm I'm thinking of ways to incorporate that geometry into it. But um, I'm just wondering if you know when you talk about your underpaintings being, you know, I. I don't know your process of how you get started, but I would imagine that you're doing a lot of curvilinear type strokes. Yes. And, and yeah. And then to solve your, your challenges or to move your painting forward, you, you rely on the geometry to kind of get you out of a rut. Right. Yes, exactly. Um, and, you know, maybe the, uh, something to try again would be that I think all of your paintings that I've seen in, in, you know, that, that you showed me were predominantly geometric and curvilinear does play a role, but to reverse that role and allow geometry to come in, but to a much lesser extent and really push that because it is an extreme. You're either gonna, I mean, I don't think, you know, there's no way to know whether you'll love it, like it, whatever, but it is a place, it's like a country you haven't been to yet that I think it's worth exploring. And I would love to see again, what you would do with that because the little bits of, it's funny when you have a totally ge a predominantly geometric painting, the curvilinear things become your gems. And clearly you're very good with the curvilinear. So then you flip the, flip the, um, the table a little bit and say, okay, now I'm gonna have mostly curvilinear and I'm gonna feature geometry. I wonder what that would be like. It's, it's just interesting. A yeah, that's a good, that's an actually an interesting thought. Um, I might have to try that. I, I just think, you know, it's, it's, that's how I think conversations between artists can lead to new ideas and we all need that, you know, and it's yes. something we all yeah. suffered from in the pandemic where we just didn't have that kind of conversation. So again, if you do that, <laughs> love to follow up with you on that. Lastly, you said um, staying in the explore stage for longer, like you, you have no troubles with playing, but when you get to that middle part, um, you say you feel compelled to resolve the painting and just know the direction to go in. Um, and that's, that's a difficult one because I don't really know how many layers you're talking about. I do, how do you, how do you, um, that you're not staying and explored long enough? Like, what is it about the end? Like when you finish a painting, is there something about it that says, wow, I wish I had stayed in the explore stage longer? Or what exactly do you mean by that? Um, I feel like I'm, you know, you learn a lot about yourself through, through painting and a lot about your personality. And I, I think I'm not very patient. And, you know, uh, you know, I like I start out and I'm very, very good at being playful and I get lots of interesting, fun, messy things down. But instead of starting to explore and going back and forth and I feel I I'm I'm in a rush. I want to know. <laughs> I get it. I get it. And uh, so, uh, you know, I ha I'm lately I've been telling myself, keep playing. Just yeah. keep playing, you know. Um, so I'm working on that, but it's it's really hard for me. I want to know where I'm going, and it, it doesn't so much. 
have to do with time. You know, I have all the time in the world. It's I, I'm not rushing because of time. I'm rushing because I just want to uh, have a sense of where I'm going with this. I get it. Interesting. Um, one thing that I um, I can't remember where where I had this discussion, but it was something about you dedicate one panel in your studio to never, ever be finished. Like <laughs> the whole point of it is to be a, a infinite slot board. And, and I assume you keep slot boards, right? I do. Probably your slot boards have become your, your best works, right? I mean, a lot of times that happens and giving yourself the permission to allow one or two, or even a series of boards to be like, you know what, those are my perpetually unfinished boards. And just to like, because, you know, sometimes you just want to test a color and you have no nothing to, to put that tested color on. So there it goes onto your unfinished panel. Um, I don't know. It's just an idea. But I like to keep at least one panel that yeah, it's never finished, you know. I think that's a, a good idea. You know, I have a lot of the little 12 by 12 um, panels laying around that are gessoed. And I, I, I don't have any trouble doing it on those. But somehow on the bigger panels, I feel like, oh, they were, you know, they were expensive and, you know, I don't want to just, you know, ruin them. So I don't tend to do that, but I, I think that's actually a good idea. One other thing that I struggle with, and, and I mean, we don't necessarily have to get into it now, but I, I hope that you um, will address it at some point. And I, cause I'm sure other people have this issue is I used to have no trouble painting large. Okay. And, and then once I started with your first course and we were working on the paper and then the small panels, I, I got very accustomed to working small. Mm -hmm. And I don't particularly like working small because I'm, I like gesture right. and I like to get my body into it. But scaling back up again, from that has been very, very hard for me in the sense that I feel like I'm not being as successful with the, um, the compositions as oh. I was with when they're smaller. Interesting. Hmm. So what is the largest skill you've ever done? What is the largest piece you've ever done? Um, well, I've done uh, some really large things on just uh canvas just you know a roll of canvas okay back to the wall but um I, I haven't done that in a long time I would say 48 by 48 is probably the yeah. the size the largest size okay and um yeah it, it was it, it's been challenging yeah and I, I think you're right um quite a few people had said one of their struggles was working large for sure but I think your challenge or your struggle is even beyond that. It's kind of like maybe it's you, cause I think what you're saying is that you used to be comfortable and then you went small and then it's hard to go back to going large again, to be successful with composition is, is adding another layer to that. It's like, not only do you have a, this thing about working large, but you're saying it's hard for me to work large and have this successful composition. So that's like a double challenge, right? right? Well, I mean, I think that the challenge really is, is not to have a 48 by 48 panel with, you know, six little paintings on it, ah. but to have something, you know, more integrated. And th I think that's kind of the challenge for me. If a painting is successful, it's very hard to crop it. Because I used to be like the cropping maniac when I was in my watercolor days. I could have a huge sheet of paper and come in with my little mat, you know, and it's like I could get 20 paintings out of one. And it's like, I mean, I, I just don't even allow myself to crop anymore. So then when, you know, that's kind of become one of my criteria is, can I crop that successfully? And I, I actually feel happy when I can't crop it into something smaller. So yeah, I, I, I do think that we will address that working large. And um, so this has been a, just a great illuminating conversation. I, I just so enjoy hearing about how other artists deal with their struggles. And um, I, I just wanna really thank you for sharing that with everybody. And I, I have a feeling it'll bring up a lot of discussion about the things that you're talking about here. And um, if I could check back with you in the future and some of these other things that you're talking about, um, potential projects, that would be really awesome. 
It's a pleasure and you absolutely can anytime. Thank you, Elise, so much for your time and good luck with all of your wonderful um, shows coming up in the future. Thank you, Pam. Take care. Good to see you. Bye-bye. Bye.